Hi there, my name is Will, and today we're gonna to look at the next part of the data engineering Zoom camp, where we're gonna look at how we can take our existing ETL pipeline and move it over to Google Cloud using GCS and BigQuery. Now, to start with, we need to get set up on Google Cloud before we can start using it. So let's get ourselves set up, and then we can start to integrate our pipeline. Here, I have a pipeline already set up to work with BigQuery. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to extract the data from that CS v file like we did in the postgres example but instead of then adding it to postgres we're going to upload that csv file to a data lake also known as google cloud storage this is simply just going to store the csv file so it's ready for us to use in google cloud Afterwards, we can then have BigQuery automatically use that CSV file and create a table from it. And then from then onwards, we can then start to process data and run queries. And as you can see, we're doing the same sort of thing that we did previously, where we're gonna have a staging table and a final table, and we're gonna be able to merge each month into that final main table to have all the data together. But the difference here is we're using the cloud to perform those operations so we can work with much bigger data sets. And like I mentioned in the previous video, the yellow taxi data is much bigger than the green, about 10 times per month. So it does take a little bit longer in the local machine, but hopefully BigQuery will help us out here. We've got the same for green as well. And then afterwards, we've got a purge file. So that's what we're going to try and achieve today. And then afterwards, we'll look at how we can add a schedule and backfills like we did with Postgres. So we can create the same process, but do it in the cloud. So let's get set up on Google Cloud and go from there. If we have a look at the plugin defaults we've set for the Google Cloud tasks, we're going to need a number of different things. We're going to need our Google Cloud service accounts. We're going to need a project ID. We're going to need a location region as well as a bucket. So what we're going to do now is we've got a separate flow to help you here, get that all set up, and then we can go to Google Cloud and then get our service account. So let's have a look at that. So to make things easier, we're going to use the key value store, which in Kestra looks a little bit like this, where we can add key value pairs that we can then use kind of like environment variables. If you're writing your code locally, this means we'll be able to access these values in our workflow as well as update them, but we will never see them directly inside of the workflow, which is quite good for making sure we don't accidentally reveal secrets or sensitive information or information that we just don't want to put in the workflow that might change, we can put it in a key value store. So we're gonna be able to update that. So using this GCP key value workflow, we're able to set a bunch of those variables automatically. So here we're able to set the service account as well as the project ID, the location, as well as the bucket name. And we can also set our data set as well, and we can give it the value Zoom Camp. So what we need to do now is go over to Google Cloud and get a bunch of things such as a service account and a project ID so that we're ready to work. Now in Google Cloud, I'm using our Kestra Sandbox project, but you can create your own project by clicking on here and then clicking new project. And in here we can name it whatever we like and then we can go from there. Once you've made your project, you should see it at the top. And now we'll be able to access various things. Now to access this, let's create a service account that will allow us to access it. What we're gonna do is go over to that menu. We're gonna go to IAM and then we're gonna press on service accounts where we'll be able to generate a service account for us to use. Now let's click create service account and give it a name. I'm just gonna call mine Zoom Camp. Now, once I've done that, I can click create and continue and then I can select a role. Now we wanna be able to upload files to GCS. So I'm gonna give myself the storage admin role. I'm also gonna give myself a BigQuery role so we can use BigQuery. So here I've got storage storage admin and BigQuery admin, but you can filter these down depending on what you're doing. Uh, you might also wanna just go the easy option and set yourself as an admin for everything. I don't recommend that in production, but for learning, it's a really great way to make sure that you don't get stuck with permissions in the way. So now we've set that, I'm gonna press continue and we're gonna see our service account's gonna get made. I'm also gonna give myself admin to this role as well. So you can see I've added my email there. And then when I press done, it's gonna generate our service account. We can see that my service account is now here at the bottom. I can press key and then in here I can add a new key. Now we're gonna use a JSON type key. I'm gonna press create and we're gonna see that it's gonna create that and download it. And we can now open that inside of VS Code. 
So here's my service account. I can simply copy that and we can now paste that into Kestra to add it to the key value store. You can also go straight to the key value store and paste it in like so. Just make sure you get the key correct so that it works in the workflow. We also need to update the project name, which for us is correct. We are gonna use Kestra Sandbox. The location I'm gonna use is Europe West 2. And then we also need to set a name for our GCP bucket. For the Google Cloud bucket name, we need to make sure this is a unique value, something that we can then make sure is going to get added in our next workflow, which is gonna set up Google Cloud for us. So I'm convinced that this is unique. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to set my data set to DE Zoom Camp. So when I execute this, we'll see all those values will get added to the key value store. So when I go to namespaces, we can see that all of those values are ready for us to use in our next workflow. Now, when we go to the setup task, what we're gonna see here is it's gonna set up the bucket name and it's gonna set up the data set. And so using those values we've already provided, it's gonna generate those values. And we're gonna use the plugin defaults here to mean that we haven't got to repeat ourselves between both. So now let's execute this and see everything get added to Google Cloud. We'll see that it's gonna create our bucket using the information we provided and the data set. So now if I refresh my page, we can see the bucket does exist. And if I come into BigQuery and refresh that too, we'll see that we'll have a new data set at the bottom here called DE Zoom Camp, which we're gonna use going forward. That means that we are now set up on Google Cloud and ready to use everything. Now, we talked about Google Cloud Storage and BigQuery, but what are we actually doing with them? Now, Google Cloud Storage is used for object storage, typically storing files of unstructured data, whether that is, you know, an image, a PDF, anything that you would store in your normal computer, you can store in object storage. But you can also store things like CSV files that we can then use in BigQuery, which is a data warehouse, which is used for storing structured data. So a CSV file where we have columns and rows, we can then put that into a table and start to manipulate it. Whereas that's much harder to do with something like an image. So that's where we're gonna use a data lake to store the original source data. And we're going to then pass that data over to our data warehouse, in this case, BigQuery, to then process it and allow us to actually dig into the details of the data. So let's have a look at the flow and go through each task to understand what's going on and how we can modify this to work for our use case. So just like before, we are going to have inputs. These inputs are going to ask us for the type of taxi, the year and the month. Now when we scroll down we can see we're going to again generate those dynamic variables here that are using expressions here to generate different values. Now when I scroll down we can see we're setting labels again so we know that which execution is doing what and then we can see here that we have got an extract to pull the data from GitHub. All of this remains the same as what we did previously. After that, instead of then using that file and putting it straight into a table, we're uploading that CSV file to our data lake, in this case, GCS. And so if I was to run up to this point, we'll see that that file will get added. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So I've removed all the other tasks. So all we have is the upload to GCS. So I'm gonna select green of January, 2019. And now when I execute this, we'll see that our bucket is going to receive the new file. So we'll see it's uploading it to GCS and we'll be able to view that in Google Cloud's platform as well. So as we can see here, we've got that January data all ready to go inside of GCS. So we know that we're ready to use it and we can now pass that over to BigQuery. So now now let's add the BigQuery task to be able to create a table from this. Next up, what we're looking at here is being able to create a table like we did in Postgres, but with the schema for our CSV. What we're gonna do here is create that main table that we're gonna merge all the different CSV files together and put it all together. And so here we've got our unique row ID, the file name, and all of the other properties that we would expect to see that we saw in the CSV file. And we can see that we've set all of these and these have all been set to, and I can actually just make that a little bit easier to see. We've said what type they are as well, which we can view on the BigQuery documentation. So here we've got numeric, int 64, string, and vice versa. So now if I execute this task again, what we're gonna see is it's going to run all of that. It's gonna upload the file to GCS, and then we're gonna see it create a table based on the schema. So here we can see it's uploaded that file again, which if I go here, we'll be able to see that the file should exist 
again. We can see it's uploaded the file again and we can see it was created at the same time right now. And if I go to BigQuery and give this a refresh, we can see now inside of our data set, we now have a new table called green trip data. And it tells us all of the different values which had matched what we had in the Postgres database. So with this, now we can start to load the data into BigQuery. But first we need a staging table too, where we can store the data temporarily and then load it from there into our main table. So let's do that. Now this next table that we have here doesn't have the unique ID or the file name. So this is exactly matching the CSV file. And so what we can do is load the CSV file into that, then add those properties in BigQuery, and then we can merge it into the main table. So this is gonna create another table, but this one is gonna have a few less properties. And we've also told it to use the data from the CSV file. So now if I execute this, what we'll see in BigQuery is we'll get two tables and the data will get, will get there from GCS. So we haven't had to upload the data again, the data is already in the cloud. So we can see it's uploading the file now to GCS. And now if I head over to BigQuery and refresh the page, we'll see that what it's gonna do is under here, we click start, we can see we've now got a table for January. So we can see that it's created the table with the schema we expected, which matches the CSV file. And we can see under details that it's using the source that is that file inside of the GCS bucket. If I give that a refresh, we can see that the date here is the new one that just got uploaded. And we can see that it's got the source from that file. And I can click on that and see that that file does exist. And as we can see here with this query I've ran on that original table, we can see that it has in fact got all the data that we would expect to see inside of that CSV file. So we know that we've got the data. Now what we need to do is add that unique value and then merge it into the main green trip data. So let's do that. So here our next task is going to then replace the table with these new values. So we can see it's gonna get vendor ID, it's gonna create that unique value based on all of this so we can re replicate it if we end up uploading the same data later as well as getting that file name. So now let's execute this and we'll see an update to what we had already started. So we can see that it's now created that temporary table with the new values. If I go back to BigQuery and refresh the page, what we'll see here is we should see the data has now got additional columns. So what we've got now is we've got another table here. This table now has the unique ID and file name, and I can actually preview this here and see the data just like we could in PG Admin. And so now this data is ready to be merged into green trip data, and we can discard the original EXT, and we can also discard this one. So we could create staging tables if we wanted to using this, but this example allows us to run lots of different ones at the same time. So let's now jump back into Kestra and now merge, add one final task to merge this all together. So here we're running another query here. This one's a merge. We're basically saying we wanna merge the project ID with the data set for green trip data, which is the name of the table. And then we want to then use the data from that staging table that we've just created, which has the unique value. So all of the schemas should be the same. It's just a simple case of putting the data together. When we run this, we'll see that all of that data will appear inside of the main table, showing that we've merged it appropriately. Our pipeline has finished. Now let's go back to BigQuery, refresh the page, and here we should see, should appear in the main table. So here we can see green trip data, and here I can preview view it and we can see that we have all the data from January. Now, if I run this again and run it for February, we should see that exist as well. So let's just quickly double check. Here we've got 630,918 rows. Let's now create, run this again, but we're gonna run it for February. This time we're gonna see that number increase appropriately. So it should be that. We can also check with the staging tables with how many values there are from February to make sure we, not have, we don't have any duplicates. So here, as you can see, it's getting itself sorted. We should actually already be able to see it if we refresh the page that BigQuery has already got a load of the data. So we can see we've got a table for February already. So now it's just got to create the one with the unique values. And then from there, we can merge it into the green table. Great, so here we can see loads of data. Now, if I go to the end of this, we can see data for February. And if I go to details, we can see that the value now is over double. So let's just double check what we had. So under details, we had, originally we had 
630,000. We also now have, my guess is that the number should be that. So let's now just double check and go to details. And as we can see, I have calculated the same number. So we know that we've got two different files in here. It has merged them together and we can be sure that there aren't gonna be any duplicates because if I run this again for January, it shouldn't add anything else to that table. That number should not change. So we can verify that by running January a second time and we'll see that it didn't actually merge anything in. So we can see here, it is going to create that table with the unique IDs. Once it's done that, it will perform the merge and then we can check to see if there's any duplicates. It's performing the merge, it's done the merge. So now let's give this a refresh and fingers crossed, we do not see that number change. So here we go to DE Zoom Camp and we go under details and we can see here that number has not changed, which would imply that it has not merged any duplicates. Fantastic. Now that we've done this, we just need to add in some conditional logic to our workflow to allow us to do it for the yellow data set as well. So let's do that. So as we can see from the topology view, it's very linear at the moment. It's gonna just run everything for green, but we wanna be able to run it for yellow too, but yellow has a slightly different schema. So what we're gonna do is add an if statement in like we did in our previous example with Postgres, where it will block everything together. So both the topology view is really easy to see what tasks are gonna to work together, and also so that we can make sure we're not running tasks for the green data set when we've got yellow data. So I've just added the yellow tasks, exactly the same as the green, but this time they have alterations to their schema. So we can see what we're gonna do is set the labels, we're gonna extract the data from GitHub, and then upload that CSV file straight to our data lake, in this case, GCS. Then it breaks into the conditional logic. We have a look at whether we're gonna run the yellow taxis, and if so, we'll perform all the tasks as we expect with BigQuery. If we're not gonna run the yellow taxis, then we'll check to see if we're gonna run the green taxis. And again, we're gonna perform all those operations together. And then once that's all finished, we'll purge any files from the Kestra executions just so that we don't have all of these CSV files sitting there and taking up space. So now I think it's time to try this on a yellow data set, which is much larger and we'll see a lo lot more rows. So let's run this on yellow. We'll see it download the data, upload that over to GCS and then perform the operations in BigQuery. So we can see it's finally uploaded that massive data set over to GCS. We can see now it's starting to work through the yellow tasks and we can see that the topology view is currently happy to go through the yellow, but we'll see it will skip the green. So what we can see here from the topology view is the green did not run because we selected yellow, but all the yellow tasks were successful. So now if I go back to my bucket and give that a refresh, what we will see is we've got green data for February and January, because that's what we ran earlier. And we've also got yellow for January. Now, if I go to BigQuery and I give this a refresh, what we're gonna see here is we'll see a bunch of tables for yellow and January, and we'll also see uh, the original ones from green. So you can see here now that we've got uh, yellow here, and you can see that this data is big because there are 7 million rows and already 1.65 gigabytes of data for one month. Whereas green in comparison, uh, is uh, 1.2 million and only 270 megabytes. And that was just two months. So you can see what I mean by the yellow one is a lot bigger. And if we're running backfills on all of 2019, we're gonna see a performance hit on our local machine. So this is where BigQuery really comes into hand and allows us to perform some of those bigger data warehousing tasks with the power of the cloud. For one last example, I'm going to uh, run this on February as well. So we can double check that it's gonna merge everything like we expected. So this will take a little while. So let's just wait and see this finish. As we can see, it has finished. So let's give this a refresh both in uh, GCS and BigQuery so we can see February data set uploaded. And we'll see here that it has uploaded the yellow data. Let me make that a little bit wider for February as well. And if I now click preview and details, we'll see that now the data is now very big at 14 million. Uh, and we can actually double check that that's all correct by doing some quick maths. We can see that this is our first number and our second number is in here. So the number that we should get is 14,687,167. And if I go to yellow and click details, we can see that that is exactly what we got. So this is now adding all the data into that singular table. Now I would maybe recommend adding some tasks in here to drop these other tables because we've got a lot of tables generated now and all we've done is process 
four months between the two data sets. So it does get a little bit messy. In the next video, we're gonna have a look at how we can use a schedule to automatically run this as the data comes in. And not only will it run it automatically, we can run backfill so we can go back in time and pretend like this workflow was running in 2019, 2020, and 2021 to get all the data that is available there. So stay tuned for that, where we can really automate this pipeline and make it work for us.